Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. Today's video we're going to discuss hand planing wood, how to prevent tear out. Now this is typically a woodworker's nightmare, but I'm going to show you all the techniques that I employ so that in most cases you'll be able to plane a piece of wood, regardless of the figure, flawlessly. Stay with us. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. One of the great things about being able to use a hand plane efficiently is it opens up a world of wood that you wouldn't otherwise be able to plane. And until you've seen a piece of wood hand planed, as opposed to sanded, you really don't know what that piece of wood looks like. Now, try it and see. I've got lots of samples here, and I'm going to go through all the different techniques that folks talk about using in order to be able to control tear out. I'm going to explain what it's about by starting with a piece of red oak that's very straight grained, easy to plane, and we'll go through and try some of these. I've got bird's eye, I've got quilted maple, I've got a piece of clara walnut with some figure in it, I got a piece of hard burl, more maple, piece of redwood burl. I don't even know if some of these are going to be able to be plain, so we're going to test it and find out, but we're going to try all the strategies, and there's several of them, some you may not even know of. But number one is your blade must be sharp, first and foremost. And if you're unfamiliar with sharpening a plain blade or you haven't been able to get that just right, we'll leave a link below to the video we recently did on sharpening. It can be done freehand, it can be done quickly. You got to get that part down first. Stay with us, we'll go through all these different techniques and see what kind of results we come out with. Probably the first rule that everybody that uses a hand plane knows is you try to plane with the grain. I'm going to explain that because sometimes folks don't fully understand what we mean. However, if you look at this piece of bird's eye or this piece of quilted maple, if you're going to try to plane with the grain, that's almost an impossible thing to do because that grain is going in every different direction. That's why you get that reflective light. Same thing with a piece of burl. However, if you look at this piece of red oak, and if you look at the side, you can see the way, now this isn't always the case, but usually it is, you can see the way the grain is running. And you want to plane so that as you're planing one fiber, it's fully supported by the next. If your fibers lay like this, and you plane from this in this direction, as this fiber is being cut, it's fully supported by the next one. If you turn that around and now plane in this direction, what happens, the blade catches this fiber, the lignin, which is the natural glue that holds the wood fibers together, is not as strong as the wood fibers are. And what happens is the blade will catch this fiber, easily separate it from the grain below it, breaking that lignin bond. And as it starts to lift, eventually the fibers back here build enough resistance that something snaps and you get torn grain. So you need to be able to read it. And the best way to show you that is to imagine a piece of wood being a bunch of drinking straws held together. And if you took them and sliced them in this direction, which is what we see here if you were to look real close. You see these little ovals. Now if I run my hand in that direction, it's fairly smooth. But if I run my hand this way, my skin catches in these, in the back side of this oval and you can feel some resistance. And on big open porous grain like this, you can actually do that. So if you run your hand this way, you'll feel this, your skin catching. And yet if you go that way, it feels nice and smooth. I always use that as my best way of determining grain direction. You, you do the looking bit, check the side, check the front, but by actually running your hand on there in both directions, you can almost always tell which is going to be the best direction to plane. And even on a piece of wood like this, although this is not a great example, usually there's going to be one side favored over the other. And this one, I don't, I don't know if I'd even say that, it's almost a 50-50. In that case, you've got to lose some other means of provide, uh, per, um, re limiting or reducing, if not completely eliminating, the tear out. Get set up. I'm using my five and a half, and this is my go-to, um, particularly when you start dealing with 
figured wood, you want a nice heavy plane. It's so much easier than trying to push something smaller. And you also it's, will want to have a little bigger footprint. It's the reason why I prefer this over the four and a half. So I'm going to take one of these blades. I've sharpened them in advance just so we wouldn't have to go back and do it. I don't have that chip breaker particularly close. I'm not a huge believer in that. Let's try this out. That's sitting back there probably a uh, sixteenth of an inch. I want to make sure there's no debris on the face of the frog. Put that in there. Make sure that it engages everything properly so that it seats. Now, because I changed that, I've got to adjust that screw to get it as tight as I want. I don't want it excessively tight, but I don't want the blade to move accidentally. Okay, once you put that blade in, now it needs to be retracted, but I also want to make sure that it's parallel to the sole, so I'll adjust it until it looks like it is. Then I'm going to retract it fully. I don't want to start with any blade exposed. And you would think that you'd be able to tell if there's a difference, whether it be a 49-51 split. This one's difficult, but I'm going to guess and say that the grain is going to be best playing that direction. Now, put a little bit of wax on there to reduce the friction. All right, when I plane, I had, didn't have it all the way in. It's coming out more on the right than the left, so I'm going to just a slight adjustment. A little bit more. Oh, that was too much. Okay, now I'll start spinning the adjuster. A little heavy on the left. I'm going to tighten that up just a bit. That's too much. I'll pull that back a little. The idea is what can we do with a sharp blade and a light projection. Now you can see those holes, those are all tears that came from the power joiner. So if we get this perfect, there shouldn't be any holes in the shaving. But we've got to get down below the ones that are already there. That's coming even better. Now this is just standard 45 degree pitch. Regular sharpening, but a very light pass. Throat's not down tight. Okay, if we look at this one, that's pretty much there. I don't see any holes in the shaving. So we've managed to get to the bottom of all of those tears that were originally there. I'm going to go one more time. Okay. Feels great. You get in there as close as you can. And you're not going to need that to be any better than that is right now. So that's bird's eye. And what you're looking at, by the way, when we were talking about straight grain on that piece of oak, here they're essentially little knots is what it is. So the grain is really, if you tried to determine which way is the grain going, well, overall it may be running in this direction, but around each one of these little bird's eyes it's swirling. So you really can't uh, address it. In fact, let's try that. Let's turn it around and plane in the other direction and see if this theory of having a uh, sharp blade with a really light pass will actually work going the other way. I didn't change anything, so the same setting. No difference. So there you have it on a piece of bird's eye. In fact, I can't really tell you that it was any better one way or the other. All 
Okay, here's this piece of Clara walnut. Now coming out of the thickness planer, it's torn badly right in this area and right in that area. So we'll see what we can do. First thing we'll do is try just the sharp blade, light cut. A little wax, reduce the friction. Okay, now I'm gonna put on the magnifiers and just have a real close look at this. Okay, now I don't know whether it's occurring right now or whether it's a result of the original work on the thickness planer, but I've got torn area right in here. Actually, this whole area right here is torn and I've got some fairly bad and deep tears right in here. And they're, they're the originals, so it's not something being caused by the plane. So I've got to take that down further to see if I can actually eliminate it or if it gets, if it continues with the plane as it is right now. Okay, look again. Where's my pencil? Okay, this area that was torn in here, I still got some right there, but I think that's original. That torn area in there is all gone. That's original. Look over here, still got some area right there, but that's original. And the rest of it is all gone. So I'm thinking that this piece, like the last one, is going to get perfected with just a sharp blade and a light pass. I'll spend another few minutes, take a little more off of this and see if we can get down through those holes. Okay. Original, really deep. All of this area that was torn is now good. We come over here and all that torn area is all good. No reason to go in there and do anything different. All that torn area is gone. Now, just for fun, let's turn it around, go the other way and see if it makes any difference. So that's still coming off intact. And like the last one, change direction, no difference. This is a piece of oak, and this is a situation that frequently happens where the grain goes like this. And it's running in one direction on that side, another direction on that side. So I'm gonna see if we can go in and clean that up. Now, from the thickness planer, it looks like it was most severe in this direction. I'm gonna try planing against the grain and see what kind of results we get. Now the only, the only um, downside to this is that those holes, which is literally what they are, are so deep, that's gonna take quite a bit of work. You remember, in order to get down to the bottom of any of these craters, you gotta take that amount of wood off the entire surface. Okay, now even, okay, so if you look real close, that is, uh, well, I wish you could see this real close because it's so easy to see the grain and tell which way. So I'm fighting the grain. Let's see if I can outline this with a pencil. This is like looking at those straws. So the grain is running in this direction to right there. This line about this wide is parallel to the surface. And then over here, 
there's a line right about here where the grain is parallel to the surface. So from here to here, the grain is running in this direction. So this is all, it's not tearing as bad, but over here, this is all fresh tears. So let's, uh, so even if we turn it around, we're going to, and this is how I would approach it. So if you take the boards, say it's 12 inches long, we've got about four inches where we're going in the right direction and the rest of it we're going in the wrong direction. So it only makes sense to flip it around. Now, you're gonna be fighting the grain in that little section. This actually, actually might be a really good example of where to use the, oh yeah. That's going to tear bad. Try this first. See how far we get and then we'll switch. We'll close the throat down. If that doesn't work, we'll use the high angle. Okay, still a little bit of remnant of torn grain here. And then of course we're tearing in here where we are now going against the grain. So let's, uh, let's close the throat down really tight. Hey, okay, one more. Okay, we're not getting rid of that. So that's not the solution. Next is to try the high angle. And I suspect on this hard white oak that that will solve the problem, but remains to be seen. Okay, I'm gonna highlight where all the torn area is. And the worst is right here, through here. All of it stops right along that line. So I've got the high angle. That means we're planning at 65 degrees. Let's we'll see what that does. Throat's quite open, so it's not, uh, we can't give that any credit. Definitely harder to push. There you go. All gone. There's a little bit left right there that uh, I could get rid of with one more pass. And I'm actually gonna see if I can't pull the blade in just a bit. And if I was to guess, I would say it's twice as hard or twice as much effort required to push the plane. Okay. No torn grain. So there's your solution for white oak. I want to do this piece of purple heart because this stuff can be notorious. I really didn't have any that had any uh, gnarly grain. But I think I'm going to try this one with this uh, 65 degree since it's already in the plane. I would say uh, Babinga and Purple Heart are, one, are two of those woods that can be pretty nasty to plane and usually respond better to scrapers. Okay, nothing torn on that. Now, kind of did this one backwards, but let's just throw in a freshly sharpened blade at the normal 45 degree. By the way, the chip breakers pulled back on this one. 
This stuff is hard. And it's hard on the edge too. I'm having to keep advancing the blade in order to make it maintain a shaving. You know, I didn't get to do much with that, but there's no tear out on it. Like I said, that wasn't a very good example because it uh, was relatively straight grained. Well, if you want us to try something else, by all means, suggest it and we'll give it a go. Uh, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said, better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.